Hey guys, Lodicus here with a full completion walkthrough for Sensors Midnight. This is released on the 7th of June 2023. It was developed by Suaka Games and published by East Asia Soft Limited. It can be found in both the Xbox and PlayStation stores for $14.99. It's an environmental puzzle stroke survival game set in a haunted park at midnight. In the park, we'll need to avoid being caught by the ghosts while solving these puzzles. The full completion should take you anywhere between one to two hours, depending on how well you pick up the controls and avoid the ghosts. There's a total of 12 achievements or trophies to get. There's a number of missables as well as collectibles to find, but we'll cover these all in one playthrough by following along with my guide. So let's get going and jump into a new game. The controls are move and look with the left and right analog sticks, X to sprint, a to interact and Y to open your inventory. You can also push the left trigger to get your camera out and we'll need this to take a photos of a couple of the ghosts. So there is a couple of collectibles, one of which is ghost photos. We need to take nine of those and I'll show you key points to do those. And there's also a total of nine gacha coins that we need to collect. And again, I'll point those out as we get to them. So after this cutscene's played out, We'll then crawl into the park itself and be able to start taking control of our character. It is going to take you a little while to pick up the controls and the camera is kind of fixed in one location. Similar to the very early Resident Evil games where you need to walk off to the side of the screen before the camera moves. One of the things I am going to change in the options menu here shortly is the control movement. It's currently set to classic. What I'm going to change it to is modern. I found modern much more easier to control your character with. But you have a play around with both. Try it in classic and then modern and see what you like the best. So I'm just going to jump into the options menu now. I just tried to move around and I realized it was being weird. So I went into the options. Just at the movement at the bottom here, I changed that to modern POV. We can now get on with the guide. Head forward a little bit. The barricade will fall down behind us and in the very middle of this pathway or pavement, there will be a gacha coin. So this is the first of the nine. Just walk up to it and press A to pick it up. And then you can just press Y to make sure that it's in your inventory. Head over, press A, it'll say item get one. And then you can press Y if you just want to double check it's in your inventory there. We're then going to take a left and head up this side of the park. You'll notice on the left there's a load of chat. Our character does seem to be live streaming while in here to a group of people. So this is quite common. Just keep pressing A to skip through the chat. And then eventually as we come to this large tree here, the chat will appear again. Just stand stationary and we're going to skip through by tapping A. And this is going to give us a quick tutorial on how to use the camera and take photos of the ghosts. So while using the camera, we're looking for this little white ghost spirit type character. Once you've got it fixated over them, it should go red to show that it's ready to take a photo. So just zoom in and out until you get the red circle around the outside and then press right trigger to take a photograph. And it should then come into focus and show you a picture of a kind of spooky looking ghost. So that's our first spirit. So we've got one gacha and one spirit. We're now going to proceed on towards the main park. So just jog along here, holding X to run. It's more of a jog than a run. And then as we get into this main park area, there is going to be a ghost that appears on the swings in the middle. If you do miss this ghost, don't worry, there is a couple of other opportunities further on in the game, which I'll show you where we can get further ghosts. But this is a sighting you can miss. So we're going to walk past the swings towards the back wall where there's a gacha coin. But as we go past the swings, our camera will spin round and they'll start swinging by themselves. Press left trigger, quickly spin round and catch a photo before it disappears. Remember to wait till it's got the red circle around it and you should get a picture of the ghost so that's our second spirit giving us an achievement and i'm going to head to the very back wall here just behind the slide and there is another gacha coin so that's our second gacha coin as well so that's it for this little park area we don't need anything else i am going to attempt to pick up a dirty rag here 
This is needed for a, a puzzle a later on in the game. However, we can't pick it up just yet. So just leave that for now and we're just going to move on. So head along this pathway. There will be an umbrella on its side. We don't need to interact or do anything with that umbrella. It's used for a side mission, which we're not going to be doing. Just keep following the path. And then eventually we should get a cutscene as we approach the midnight door. Once this door is open, we'll then start getting spirits come through to our world. These can then interact and deal damage to us and in some cases kill us. So once this door is open and the spirits start coming through, you can go into the menu and do a manual save. I recommend in using this quite heavily just in case you do get caught by the ghosts you don't have to backtrack too far so once the cutscene's finished we're just going to approach the door unfortunately nothing happens here at this point so we just proceed on down the path and we will come back to this shortly so as we go down the path, there'll be a little seating area to the left hand side. There is a gacha coin in the back left on the wall. So we're going to go and pick that up. I can just scoot around with this dodgy camera work. On the table there is a code for the padlocks, which is 4608. I'll remind you a little later on when we need that. But in the back left here, you'll find a gacha coin on the top. Just make sure you pick that up. Open me inventory there and we do of course have three. We're done in this little seating area so we'll proceed onward. Around this next corner is the western gate. We will need to interact with the gate but just before we do that we're going to take a picture of yet another ghost. So go past the phone booth we don't need to interact with that at all. I am going to interact with this seat here and we get a coin. So it's not a gacha coin, this is like a form of currency coin. And then we're going to open our camera here. So I saw some ghost legs on the left hand side, but what we're going to do is pan to the right. Look out over the grassy area and you should find another spirit. Zoom in a little bit and take a picture. And then that is our third spirit taken. We're then going to head towards the western gate and just interact with both the gate and the console beside it. So just walk up to it press here and then there is like a key card swiper on the left hand side here just press here on that can't do anything with it but we then can proceed back to that midnight door so we're going to backtrack to that door and then interact with that again and then this time she's going to do a little chant and of course it's going to open the door so i'll pick up the commentary when we get to something of interest Now that we've interacted with the door, we can proceed a little further on with the story. So we're going to go back towards the western gate. We get a little bit of dialogue on the chat and then a cutscene should kick in shortly 
where the door opens and the spirits start coming out. Once this cutscene is played out, we're then going to use the gate which has the padlock on it and we're going to put in that cord that we saw on the table. Just before we interact with the gate, there is another spirit we can take a photo of. So get your camera out, zoom right in, and there is one kind of hanging from the lantern. Just get a photo of that, and that should be spirit number four. We can now interact with the gate. And again, we're going to spell out 4608. So that again was 4608, and that should open the gate. I suggest doing a manual save here before you proceed any further on because as soon as we start walking forward this is going to initiate a chase sequence i did notice that it's done an auto save as well so you should be okay so here we're gonna to have to run away from a ghost chasing us what i do suggest is not run in a straight line as she gets near you she's going to do a lunge or a grab as she does that you're going to have to move or zigzag You'll have to avoid her lunges a couple of times, maybe three or four times, depending how far you get. So start sprinting. Once this cutscene plays out, hold X and we're going to run straight ahead. And then as the camera pans across, you should be able to see her chasing behind. And just try to predict when she's going to grab you to move out the way. Keep doing this till we get to the end. In this example, I'm only going to give you one of me dying here. All future deaths are going to be cut out. It is quite a lengthy death sequence, so what you can do is press start and go to load and load one of your previous saves and we'll go again. Like I said, this is going to be the only death I'm going to kind of show you through. Everything after that will be cut out of the video. So we're going to just run back down this corridor again. As the camera pans around, she's going to lunge. Just keep strafing left and right as she goes for you. And then eventually, as you get to the end of this corridor, we should get a cutscene and everything will be a OK. So like I said, going forward, make sure you do plenty of manual saves. You do get up to 10 save slots, so make sure you use those. And you shouldn't have to backtrack too far when you do get caught by a ghost. At this next bit, we won't be able to backtrack. So there'll be an invisible wall here, so we can't go down the hill anymore. We need to proceed up towards the shrine. As we're going up the hill on our right hand side, there will be another ghost to spot or take a photograph of. I am going to get my camera out a couple of times here looking for the individual. I accidentally take a photo there. There is one in the distance down there, but we can't yet take a photo of him. We'll get him shortly. So make your way up the bank here. And then on the right hand side, I think once the camera's changed position three or four times, you then should be able to see a spirit on the right hand side. I'm still not quite in the correct position here. It's a little bit further up. There is a ghost here on the right hand side. Unfortunately, you can't take a picture of her. But just to her left here is another spirit just by that rock, which you can take a picture of. I believe that's our fifth spirit now that we've taken a picture of. And we're just going to head a little bit further up the hill and there will be a couple of gacha coins. So this first coin that we're going to come to on the floor is just a standard currency coin. So that puts that up to two. And then if we bear left here, there's another like little seating area with picnic benches. If you hug to the far left and beside this tree, if you want to get your camera out, there's another spirit there. Just take a picture of that one. And then on this bench here is a lighter, which we're going to need a little later on. And at the very back next to the lamppost here is another gacha coin, which should take us up to four. So at this point, you should have a lighter, four gacha coins and two kind of currency coins. And we should have the achievement for spotting all the ghosts. If you did miss the one on the swing, I will give you another two that you can use if you did miss them for whatever reason and that should definitely cover you off with your ghost sightings 
So as we get to the top of the bank here, we will find the shrine. This will also pop an achievement once we interact with the save point at the top. Before that though, in this kind of water barrel here, there is another gacha coin. So just press A to interact with that. And that will move us up to five of the nine that we need. Then head up to the very top of the hill underneath the shrine here. On the left hand side, there will be two items. One of which we need is a part of a stone or a rock. Just make sure you pick that up. And then just by the Buddha or the statue here at the back left, there is a item of protection. So this is like a one time use. So if you do have this in your inventory, when you get hit by the ghosts, you'll have a burst of light, which will negate any damage and you won't get hit or killed by the ghosts. So these are useful to have in your inventory and it gives you like a little brief tutorial here. There's a ghost come at us and it's kind of flashed us. These trigger automatically. You don't need to press anything for these to go off. As long as you have one in your inventory, when you get hit, it should go off. Right, we just need to interact with the shrine itself. This is going to do an auto save and it will give us the achievement for finding the shrine. Once we've interacted with this, this is going to bring a load of the ghosts into the world. And as we go back down the hill, we're going to bump into a couple of those. So as the camera pans round, we should have a little brief cutscene again. And this is going to give us a tutorial on how to hide from the ghosts. So once you trigger a ghost encounter, they'll chase after you. The ones here that we're seeing now are the kind of the basic bald ghosts, which look male. Um, these guys will eventually give up and stop following you. However, the female ones, which have the loose heads hanging off their heads, they'll persistently chase you down until you die or you hide, which we're doing here. There is various little bushes or areas that we can hide. These are indicated by like blue fireflies that fly around the area. All you need to do is run up to one of those, press A, and then there's a little mini game that you need to do to make sure that you don't get seen. Once we get to one of those, I will show you what to do. But these basic ghosts are pretty easy to get past. So all we're going to do is just sprint past these guys or run past these guys. Just make sure that you keep out the way of their lunges, similar to the females. However, they're a little easier to dodge. Just doing a manual save here, just in case I do get caught by one of them. So there we go. Again, underneath these trees, there is one of those medallions that's going to give you an extra hit or life. Just in case you do get caught by one of the ghosts. It's going to head back down the bank. There is another ghost here as well on this corner. So when the camera pans round, just make sure that you don't run into him. Give him plenty of space to get past. And then once we get to the bottom of the hill, we'll find both the male and female toilets. We're going to use this as like a little base or a safe place to drop our items because our inventory only holds four. So we're going to be picking up a hell of a lot more than that. So what we're going to do is empty some of it on the floor that we don't currently need. So just press Y to open your inventory. We're going to go to the stone, just select that and then go to drop. And then same again with the lighter as we don't need that just yet. I have moved my character a little bit because otherwise the items do stack and it's a little bit hard to see them because they all stack on top of each other. So right, with the inventory cleared a little bit, I'm going to do a quick save because we do have another ghost here on our right hand side. Before we go and see him, we're going to interact with this door. You would have got this code a little later on to the game because we have it already. We're just going to pop this door open and get the item inside. So just interact with the door and then we're going to type in 8160. So that is 8160 and the door should open. There's some wire cutters in the middle of the room on the bench, but if you get your camera out and turn behind you, you can take a picture of this ghost up by the air conditioning. That's just in case you missed the one on the swing. So you should have all your ghost encounters now, and we've just picked up the wire cutters and we can just leave this room. Again, we don't need the wire cutters just yet. So I'm going to head over to the little spot just outside the little female toilets, and we're just going to drop the wire cutters on the floor giving us a little bit more inventory space. These items will stay there permanently, so don't worry about them disappearing or anything. They'll stay there at all times. Behind here, 
the cover that we've just been into there is another ghost sighting spot however I'm going to go and interact with this machine so the broken vending machine here if you interact with it twice it should give you a gacha coin then if you run into the corner where the clock is behind this box is also another gacha coin so pick that up and that should take us up to a total of seven we're just missing two of those now at the foot of this bench which you can't quite see is another protection item so if you press a just around that bench you'll get another one of those so you can take another ghost hit and then behind this little shed is another ghost sighting which i'm just taking another photo of him again not necessary because we already have the achievement but feel free to do that if you've missed one or two before this vending machine will dispense a bottle of beer which we're going to need a little later on however we don't quite have enough coins we need a total of six of the currency coins not the gacha coins to get the bottle of beer out so we'll leave that for now and i'll come back to that a little later next we're going to go into the ladies toilets just make sure that your inventory is relatively clear we've only got the gacha coins on us and then i recommend doing a save here so a manual save before going into the toilets because we're going to have a chase sequence shortly after it so in the bottom right corner of the bathroom there is a cleaning trolley on that trolley is one of these currency coins that we need to buy that bottle of beer so just make sure you go over and pick that up once you've got that we're then just going to pick up the wrench or the spanner which is sat on the sink there pick that up and then we're going to head outside as we walk out the door there's going to be a quick cutscene, and one of the female ghosts that's going to hound us is going to chase after us i recommend going the opposite way i've just gone there so go down rather than left because down at the very bottom of the screen just off camera is a hiding spot so instead of going left the way i went head down this direction and then just quickly press a down here where the butterflies are and then this will initiate the mini game for hiding so that white bar that's moving left and right is controlled by yourself using the left analog stick what you want to do is make sure that's sat over the green arrow at all times and then once the bar's filled up the ghost should disappear because you've successfully hidden just going to do another manual save there as it is quite a bit difficult area that we've got through and then we're going to go around to the back of the ladies toilets and use that wrench or spanner that we've just picked up just go into your inventory and make sure you use it on these pipes around the back and then we're going to get a little mini game so first of all we're going to raise the pressure on the red one this in turn is going to bring the pressure down on the white one so once the white one's empty we're then going to move over to the blue one keep turning this until the red one's empty and then once both red and white are empty we're then going to move all the way to the right to the white one and just keep turning this until the pressure bar is full on the white and that should complete the puzzle game in turn we'll also get the achievement pop there for the meters which is for repairing the meters okay so the wrench has now gone from our inventory and now we're going to work on the centipede mini game so to destroy or kill the centipedes what we need is the cloth that we saw on the swings there at the very start we need to buy the bottle and we'll also need the lighter which we should already have on the floor there so if we go down this section of pathway here so just beside the one that takes you up to the shrine there's another path here that goes in that kind of same direction on the floor here is a key card make sure you pick that up and then if you go on and interact with this gate here you'll get a little brief cutscene talking about the centipedes shortly after this i'm then going to take a picture of another ghost that's in this tunnel again totally not necessary because we've taken over the six now that we needed for the achievements so that's nine just in case for whatever reason some didn't count or you missed the one on the swings so from this point onwards i'm not going to be taking any more photos of the ghosts we're just going to be getting through the puzzles and exit the game so we're going to backtrack now because that gate is currently locked with the centipedes on it i'm just going to do a quick manual save there just in case if we do die we don't need to backtrack and do all that again okay so what we're going to do now is head all the way back to that swings area where we're going to pick up that dirty cloth so it's just a little case of backtracking and avoiding the ghosts 
so I'm going to go a little bit quiet on the commentary here and I'll pick it up when we get to something of interest. So just before we go up towards the playground area where the swings are we're going to bear right and go down this kind of little alleyway amongst the trees at the very end here is a hiding place if you need it but there is also a coin on the floor not a gacha coin but one we'll need to buy the beer so make sure that you pick that up this one's a little bit tricky to grab Thankfully, we've managed to click on the hide because one of the ghosts was chasing us, one of those female ones. So just make sure you complete the puzzle game or the mini game for the hiding sequence. And then she's going to go and reset and hopefully disappear completely. So now that she's out the way, we can then pick up the currency coin and get the hell out of here. That's all we needed down in this little section here. So now we're going to head to the playground and then pick up that cloth. So just approach the back of the swing here just keep pressing here to pick up the cloth as long as our inventory was empty which it should be if you're following along with this guide we'll then just backtrack all the way back to where we were where those women's toilets were so again i will pick up the commentary again when we get a little closer to something of interest Okay, so just before turning right here, what we're going to do is go straight on and there is another gate here that's closed but can be open if you just walk up to it and press A. This goes into kind of like a foresty area with a load of picnic benches. Here's where we're going to pick up some more items as well as that last coin that we need to buy the beer. So in here there is a couple of ghosts lurking around so just be careful. At the very top of the screen there on the floor lit up is one of those protection medallion things which we could pick up and I will do a little later on I think but you could have picked it up there and then. There is a rock here which we're going to need for one part of the puzzle later on but my inventory is currently full so I haven't picked that up. On the left hand side here is a sacred rock again with an item on the top we don't need that item at all for this playthrough so that can be totally ignored you don't even have to interact with the rock there is a save point here if you just want to do a quick auto save and then we're going to bear right heading a little further into the woods we should come out at the back of the women's toilets here however it's currently blocked off with some weeds or vines and we'll need to cut through them just interact with these and then as we backtrack from here we should get a cutscene where a new ghost appears Thankfully, this is just a cutscene and we don't need to do anything to avoid him. And then once he dies, what he's going to drop is kind of a, a, a cutting tool or an axe. And what we're going to do is pick that up and use that to cut through the reeds or the vines there. And that's going to create a shortcut that we're going to utilize to get some of these items back to the toilets and stash them away in our little safe area. So once this cutscene's played out, you should have both like a red keycard thing on the floor as well as a cutting tool. 
The red thing can be ignored, just leave that where it is. We're not going to use that in this playthrough. However, we are going to make a little bit of space in our inventory to pick up that cutting tool. So just press A to spam through this. And then we're going to have to open our inventory and drop something. I think I dropped the key card in this case. And then I'll pick up the cutting tool and then go back to them reeds or vines just to the top of the screen. Use the tool on that and that's going to use up the tool and it's going to create a shortcut through to the bathroom area. Our little safe spot which should be uh, clear of ghosts and things. And then this is where we're going to store some of our items. So I'm going to backtrack to where that guy died. I'm going to re-pick up that key card again. And as the key card's in our inventory, we may as well use it because you need to use it nearby here anyway. So head back towards the toilets, those vines you've just cut through. And then as you pass through, we're just going to head further along the pathway here. So turn right and then follow the path as if we were going back towards the swings. If you notice on the left, there's like a red door with red circuitry running through it. If you walk up to it, it'll mention that you'll need a key card of some sort. We already got that in our inventory. So just press on it and press use. And this is gonna unlock a shortcut as well as a route through to the catacombs for another achievement. However, we haven't got the key for the catacombs yet. So just backtrack out of here and that's freed up at least one slot in our inventory and we don't need to worry about the key card anymore. So we're just going to head back to the female toilets where we've been stashing everything. I'm going to drop a few items on the floor here to make some space. And then we're going to go back into the foresty area to pick up some more loot. So in this case, I'm just going to drop the rag and I'm going to leave both the gacha and the currency coins in my inventory. And then we're going to head back into that same foresty area that we've just left. In here, we're going to find the last coin that we need to buy the bottle of beer. And I think we also pick up some electrical tape that we're going to need a little later on. So I'm just going to do a quick save. Was it there? Yep. I'm going to head a little bit further into this foresty area where the picnic benches are. So as you transition through here, there's a pond directly in front of you. Beside that pond is a rock. So I picked the rock up and there is also a coin here, which I'm trying to interact with, but I've actually interacted with a pond. There is a doll in the middle of the pond, which is used for like a side mission, which we're not going to do. So I've got the currency coin there, which was sat on the side of the rocks. So I've got the stone and I'm currently carrying three of those coins that we need to buy a beer. On this table here is some electrical tape. We're going to pick up that and we now have a full inventory. There's still one item in this area that we're going to need, which is a screwdriver that's currently stabbed into one of the trees. We'll come back to that when we need it. For now, I think we've got enough to get the centipede achievement and open one of the shortcuts to get to another part of the level. So we're just going to leave this foresty area and head back to the toilets. Once we get to the toilets, what I'm going to do is combine the two stone pieces that we currently have. That's going to combine them into one item. We still don't quite have enough. So I'm just going to drop the electrical tape here first of all. And then I think I pick up the other half of the rock. Yep. So there's actually three pieces of rock we need. We've only got two. So we've combined them, but it's still not a finished product. So I'm going to drop that on the floor to make a little bit of space. And then I'm going to head over to the vending machine. So the working vending machine over here to buy that bottle of beer now have the six coins that we need we've already put three in i'm going to put the other three in to complete the set and buy us the beer so just select those and press use i did get hit by a ghost there but thankfully had one of those protection things on me which has just killed the ghost and we have a bottle of beer in our inventory now so now that we have a bottle of beer we have the lighter and the rag we can make a molotov cocktail so I'm just picking up the lighter and the rag that was on the floor. And then what we're going to do is combine them together. 
So select the bottle first of all, hit combine and then hit the rag and then hit the lighter and then hit combine and then the bottle and that should make a Molotov. You'll also notice that we have a bottle top or cap in our inventory as well. Make sure you don't lose that. We're gonna need that to complete a circuit a little later on. So I'm now gonna make some space in my inventory and take some stuff to the next area. So I'm gonna drop the gacha coins. I'm gonna drop the lighter and the bottle cap, leaving in my inventory the Molotov, the duct tape and the wire cutters. So just dropping the gacha coins here. Somewhere that I know I can pick them back up again. So just grab the wire cutters. I've already got the Molotov and I'm also gonna pick up the electrical tape here. Once you've grabbed those three items, we're then gonna head back to the tunnel where the centipedes were. So not that way. So just the adjacent one to the shrine so this pathway here, head to the very end. And then as we get to the gate or the fence here with the centipedes on it, what we're just gonna do is go into our inventory and use the Molotov. That in turn is gonna burn the centipedes off and open the gate, allowing us to proceed through. About halfway down this tunnel on the left hand side behind some metal sheets is another gacha coin. So just keep an eye out for that. I will mention it again once we get there. And there will also be a quick cutscene with a ghost. This ghost is gonna appear and fly straight down the middle. I don't think there's any way of avoiding him. I do move to one side, but he hits me anyway. It's not an outright kill. He'll just do a little bit damage and leave you a little bit woozy. So nothing too much to worry about. However, I did have the protection thing on, which has saved me the hit. Here on the left-hand side, these metal sheets, there is a gacha coin behind it. Just keep tapping A until you get it pop into your inventory. Then we're gonna to head to the very end of this tunnel. We'll need to interact with the gate here. What that's gonna do is give us some wire. That'll go straight into our inventory if we've got some space, which we do. And we're going to leave the key card on the floor for the time being as our inventory is currently full. So as we proceed through here, we'll get another cutscene and a ghost or spirit will drop down and we're going to have another chase sequence. So maybe do a quick save here as it kicks off or just before it kicks off. And then there is a hiding space just behind the bench at the end of this corridor here. So mind that explosive orb, if that does hit you, it'll slow you down and she'll more certainly get you. Avoid her lunges, head behind the bench and just press A to hide and then complete the mini game and she will disappear, leaving us to proceed on. We're then gonna move down to the left-hand side of this wire fence. A little further on is a padlock on it. We don't have a key or a code for this one. Instead, we're gonna use the wire cutters that we've picked up earlier on. So just tootle along to this fence and then we're just going to stand beside the lock here, go into your inventory and use the wire cutters. This will be the first and only time we'll need the cutters. This can be dropped and left anywhere you want. I'm gonna stock all my items here at the base of this area. So I'm gonna drop the wire cutters Move a little bit, drop the duct tape, and then I'm gonna move again, I think. Oh no, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stack these. So those two are stacked. So the wire and the tape is stacked and the cutters are out the way. At the very back here there's a shed. On the floor here there's a protective charm. And on this stool is another part of the rock. So this is the third part we are missing for the rock to combine the three together. Pick that up. And there is a lubricant can here. I'm going to pick it up, although we're not going to use it. There are also a fuse box there you can interact with, but we'll need the screwdriver to open that. I'm going to drop the lubricant here on the floor because we don't need it just yet. And we're going to backtrack towards the ladies' toilets again. So as we're going back, we should have a piece of the stone as well as that gacha coin. And then as we're going past, we should pick up the bloody key card, which is on the floor, which I'm about to pick up now. 
So once you've got those three, just head back to the women's toilets and we'll continue on from there. We're now back here at the toilets. We're going to interact with the stones here and make one big rock. It's actually made a head. I'm going to use that in straight away to unlock the catacombs. So we've now got a boulder of a, a head. So we're going to head inside this door that we opened up a little earlier on with the key card. Just interact with that to go through. And then on the right hand side is a gate which is currently locked just interact with that you'll notice that there is a head missing so we're just going to go into our inventory and use the head or the boulder and that's going to open the door and give us the achievement for unlocking the catacombs as we go inside there is also our last gacha coin here so as you get about halfway down take a left head up this ramp and grab that coin. So that's all nine coins that we need for the gacha machine. And we don't need to go any further into the catacombs. So we're just going to backtrack, head out the same door that we came through. And then we're going to head towards the lady toilets again. In this case, we're going to pick up a couple of more items that we need to take with us to do the next puzzle bit. So at the moment, we've got a bloodied key card and our gacha coins. So I've picked up the ones that I dropped previously. So we've got the full nine that we need, and we have also got an IT card, which is covered in blood. We're going to now head back into the forest. Within here, there is a fountain which we can use to cleanse or clean the ID card. And there is also the screwdriver that's stuck in the tree, which we're going to need to open the fuse box. So just avoid the ghosts here, make a save. I made quite a late save here just before being grabbed. You should have made one just before you came into this foresty area. She's been hit by her. It's used one of the protection things. Otherwise, it would have died at that point. Just going to make a beeline straight for these butterflies. Interact with that. Do the quick hide game. If needed, the protection spell seems to have cleared me off anyway. And then we're going to interact with this tree, which is going to give us the screwdriver we need. And then if we go to this right hand side here, just beside this lamppost, I'm just grabbing that protection thing that I mentioned earlier on. So beside this lamppost, there is a fountain or a well. Just use the bloodied key card on that. And that's going to wash it off. And it's going to be a usable key card now. So before heading back to the ladies' toilets, we're going to head towards the western gate and use this key card once. Just avoid the ghost as much as you can. Do another manual save where needed. So probably every time you pass a, a patrol of a ghost, just do a save just to be on the safe side. Head towards the western gate. So pass the phone booth again. I'm going to do another save. And then head towards the western gate. And then the control panel beside the gate, we're going to go up to it and attempt to use the key card. So open your inventory. Select the key card and use. 
it is going to swipe it however it's going to say that there's not enough power everything's going to go dark however there's going to be a red cable or wire running along the top here that actually runs back to that fuse box which we've been dropping the items off at at our second location as we've triggered that it's also triggered another encounter with one of these female ghosts or spirits that's trying to kill us so we're going to head back to that hide spot again i would have died there if i didn't have my protection spell so again keep saving as much as you can just to keep you from backtracking too much and then once we've completed this little hide puzzle she's going to disappear and we can proceed onwards so now we should have the key card the screwdriver and the gacha coins in our inventory and we're going to backtrack to the female toilets we're done in this section now we don't need to return here we've got all the items out of here that we need so in this next segment when we get back to the toilets we will need to pick up the bottle cap that's one item that we haven't moved over to the new zone yet and that is required to make a circuit to fix the fuse box so in this piece of video i don't actually pick the bottle cap up i'm just advising you guys to pick it up it was actually wedged underneath the lighter so i didn't see it and by the time i get over there and realize i've missed it i had to backtrack again and collect it and i've cut that out of the video so this is your quick reminder of what you need to take over there now the nine gacha coins the screwdriver the bottle cap that should be on the floor there and the clean id card which is no longer covered in blood once you've got those four, head back through the centipede tunnel, which we cleared previously. There's no ghosts or anything in there now, so it should be just clear. As we run through here, we'll come out in the starting zone where we first started. This area is where you'll also find the gacha machine where we need to put the coins in. It needs a total of 12 to win the outfit. However, you only need nine for the achievement, and that's all we're going for in this video. So head towards the gacha machine. Head over to it, press start and then insert your coins. I did press A a couple of times here and the ghost comes up and hits me. What you want to do is just press start and use the coins. All nine are going to go in there and you should get three achievements pop. One for the three coins, one for the six and then finally the nine. Giving you the total you need for the trophy or the achievements. Just doing a quick save here. And then we're going to plod on to the very end. There is another female ghost outside the wire fence. So we're just going to initiate a chase with her. And then go straight to the hiding spot behind the seats. Play the mini game. And then she should disappear from the map. Once this is done, we're then going to head into the little wire fenced area where the shed is at the back. We're going to use the screwdriver that we're now carrying to open the fuse box at the end and then we need to make a makeshift battery however we don't have a battery yet that's going to be our next port of call so just mind these ghostly hands that spawn they won't kill you but they will do a little bit of damage so head into this back shed area we're going to interact with this and then use the screwdriver on it I think I tried the screwdriver first, which didn't quite work. So interact with it first, saying that you need a screwdriver, and then use the screwdriver. And that should open the fuse box. You can now interact with it, but we still need a battery. The current one's currently dead. So I'm going to do a little bit of inventory management here. I'm going to get the cog and the battery in this run. So what we're going to need is the screwdriver key card's not necessary so i'm going to drop that on the floor and then we're going to pick up the lubricant so all we need is the screwdriver and the lubricant which is the can and then we're going to head off towards the playground area and i'll pick up the commentary when we get near something to talk about
In the machine, there's a small machine that has a number of cogs in the middle of it. So that machine you can see there with the two brightly colored circles. Head over to that, walk into the front of it, press A to interact with it initially. And then what we're gonna do is press start and then use the lubricant. This is gonna make it silent, allowing us to extract the gear or the cog out there without alerting any ghosts. So once you use the lubricant, it should instantly say get item in the bottom right and we should have a cog or a gear now in our inventory and the lubricant has been used. We're now gonna go and get a battery. So in this camp in the corner, which we briefly went into previously, we managed to get a coin in here and hid from one of the ghosts. I do get hit by this orb. Just maybe wait in this spot until that's worn off just so the other ghost doesn't kill you. And then we're gonna go into the far corner where we'll find a radio. You just need to interact with the radio a couple of times and you'll take the AA batteries out of the back of it. Now that we've got the gear or the cog, as well as the battery, we can then go back to that little shed area where the power or fuse box is. So I'll pick up the commentary again once we get near that. Just avoid that last ghost patrol there. We'll head inside. What we're gonna do is drop the cog and the screwdriver because the fuse box is now open. We don't need that anymore. We are gonna need the cog or the gear a little later on, but we're just gonna put it out on the floor for now. Here we want to pick up the duct tape, the wire, the battery and the bottle cap. The bottle cap you should have brought over previously when I asked you to. I have cut that from my video when I realized I didn't have it. We're then going to go to the fuse box and we're going to use all of these four items on it. So just get into a position where they actually get used and then select all four. So the battery, use, the wire, use, duct tape, use, and then finally the bottle cap, use, and that should create a circuit. Now all you need to do is copy what ones I turn here to make a full circuit. So just maybe go to the very end of this puzzle completion and just pause the video, copy what you see on screen and that should complete the circuit and bring the power back online. Now that we have the power back online, we just got one final puzzle left to do and then we've completed the game. So first of all, we need to pick up the screwdriver, the cog and the ID card. These are the last three items we need. So make sure that you've got the cog or the gear, the screwdriver and the ID card. And then we're gonna make our way towards the playground. We're not gonna go through the playground this time. What we're actually gonna use is the shortcut door, which we've opened up using that key card previously. So head to this right hand side wall, interact with that kind of door with the green circuitry on and then we're going to transition through to that catacombs room. I'm going to go straight over and come out the other side so we're very close to the ladies toilets which is our other safe spot. And then we're going to head towards the clock that's in the very corner by, beside those vending machines. Just going to do a quick save just in case we get caught. We don't need to backtrack too far. So ladies toilets here. We have another one of those female ghosts of spirits we're going to need to hide from. Again at the very bottom against the wall here. Some more butterflies. Just press A before she gets you. Complete the mini game. And then hopefully this should be our last ghost encounter that we need to avoid. 
exit that one she's gone and then we're going to go to the clock in the far right corner the clock was missing a gear and it needs to be set to a particular time for the gates to open so the park seems to open at 4 a.m so firstly interact with the clock and then we're going to use the gear or the cog on it that's going to fix the clock and allow us to set the time just set it to four o'clock in the morning so zero four zero zero and that should say the gates are about to open that's our final puzzle complete all we need to do now is backtrack all the way to the fuse box which we've been to just previously and then use the id or the key card on that fuse box and that should complete the game so we're just going to go through that shock tunnel that we use for the catacombs head through there come out the other side at the playground scoodle through the fence head to the fuse box and then use the id card on the fuse box and then that should pop our very final achievement if you found this guide useful as always drop it a like if you want to see more content from myself please do subscribe maybe drop me a comment below if there's anything in the guide that's not quite right or if you did forget the bottle cap like i did Thank you.